Welcome back everyone. We're currently doing a series on TEC efficiency. Uh, it's generally believed that TECs are about 2 to 10 percent efficient. Uh, however, that's not actually based on any facts that I can find. In the previous episode we discussed conservation of energy and that is essentially if you bang in 100 watts of electricity into a oil heater you get out 100 watts of heat. So you apply 100 watts of energy in, you get 100 watts of energy out. You obviously don't get electricity out of a heater, you get that energy converted to heat. If you apply, uh, apply 100 watts of electricity, you don't get 110 watts of heat out, nor do you get 90 watts of heat slash energy assuming that all the energy going in is converted to heat which for the argument's sake and sim simplicity it is so hopefully you've watched that video because it's quite important that we fully understand the preceding statements theories laws before we move on to the next one so we're talking about TEC efficiency, but we've yet to actually talk about efficiency, and we're not actually going to talk about TEC efficiency in this episode either. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about what people believe efficiency is, because it's my experience that most people do not know what efficiency actually is. They have a couple of thoughts slash beliefs, and that's what they think efficiency is. And this is mostly mm, propagated, uh, fed to us through sales ads where people know that the word efficient will sell something. So if it's more efficient or if, or it doesn't even have to be the word more, it's just the word efficient, they'll sell more. So people commonly claim like a, a panel heater is efficient and they'll sell more. And that's kind of implied that it's more efficient than other forms like an oil heater and vice versa when they're actually the same efficiency. So these are the statements that people generally believe efficiency is. Something that uses less energy is more efficient. Hmm. And something that costs less to run is more efficient. Well, those statements can be true, but they are not facts, and you can't just purely base a decision on those two statements. So we're going to go into those statements a little bit more now. So heaters. Something that uses less energy is not necessarily more efficient. So here we have two heaters. They are exactly the same, you could say. We have a 2000 watt heater and a 1000 watt heater. Now if we plug this into the wall, and this one into the wall, we're applying 2000 watts in, and we're getting 2000 watts out. In a 1000 watt heater, we're applying 1000 watts, and we're getting 1000 watts out. Now efficiency wise, they are exactly the same. Neither is more or less efficient than the other one. Same goes for turning the power up or down on a heater. This is a 2000 watt heater. What happens if we put it on low? Is it now half as efficient or twice as efficient or the same? Well, let's think about that. Thanks to conservation of energy, we know that it, you know, we're now putting in half as much energy. We're putting in 1000 watts and we're getting out 1000 watts. So the efficiency is the same. All the power that's going in is coming out as heat. Now I realize that we are having an overly simplistic view of this because there are other me means that the energy could escape the heater, but for simplicity's sake they are exactly the same efficiency. So neither is more or less efficient than each other. The next one is cost. People seem to believe that something costs less, it therefore must be more efficient. 
because ultimately people only really care about what it's going to cost them in the pocket. They don't actually care about efficiency at all. They care about how much it's going to cost them. And here's an example. We can take a really old muscle car, good old Mustang. I think it's got a 289 engine in it. It's made in the 1960s. It has a V8 carbureted energy. Can't get any simpler than that. Look how clean the engine bay is. There's, there's like nothing in there. And we can compare that to a modern turbo diesel truck. Now, we can drive from point A to point B in both vehicles. And it may actually cost us less to drive in our old school Mustang than in a modern turbo diesel truck. And that's in part because our turbo diesel truck's pulling a huge load. But cost in petrol or diesel, just cost in your pocket, does not necessarily make anything more or less efficient. It's guaranteed that our truck with a turbo diesel modern engine, it looks kind of old this truck, but it's actually quite new, will be far more efficient as in the amount of energy that goes into the engine relative to the amount of work that comes out and turns the wheels will be far greater than our Ford Mustang. But our Ford Mas Mustang weighs nothing in comparison to our truck and is not doing as much work because it's not pulling a load. So therefore, even though it's it's less efficient, it can cost less for the same trip. But cost is not necessarily an indication of something being more or less efficient, especially not comparing apples to apples, which frankly no one ever does. If they compared apples to apples, a lot of the times you'll just fall straight into this situation where the efficiency is the same. But obviously, if we can compare a more efficient, I'm using inverted commas with my hands, method of heating like a heat exchanger, which moves air from one place to another, then the efficiency would be different. But we're not discussing that at this point. So that are the two main misconceptions slash misunderstandings of what efficiency is. People believe that something that uses less energy is more efficient. That may or may not be true. But just looking at the specs and saying, oh, it uses less energy, does not make it mean, without a doubt, that it is more efficient. And something that costs less does not make it more or less efficient either. You have to look a lot harder to decide what is actually more efficient. However, as I said before, most people don't really care about efficiency. They actually care about how much it's going to cost them in one way or another. So hopefully you've enjoyed that. Um, we've got a Facebook page which shows you what's coming up. You can get the, to that from the shop, which is ultrasonic2.com. You can get the free TEC calculator from there. Um, make a donation. Hopefully you've enjoyed it, and we will continue on this series. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.